Um, my name is Tianhao Wan. I'm a fifth year PhD student from Purdue University. And uh, in this work, I'm going to show you some <coughs> uh, exciting re result about uh, local differential privacy that exploit uh, consistency constraint. So this is a joint work with my colleagues, uh, Milan Zutao, Boris, and my advisor, Ni Hui Li. So the background or the motivation of this talk is like this. There are many devices nowadays, and each user may have different uh, devices. And uh, some of the devices might uh, collect data from user, but uh, some of the data might be very sensitive. So people are reluctant or feel embarrassing to uh, share this kind of data. To overcome this kind of issue, uh, local differential privacy has been deployed in many big uh, companies. Uh, in particular, uh, Google, Apple, Microsoft, and uh, uh, Alibaba all deploy some system that uh, collect different kinds of uh, statistics. Uh, uh, in particular, they, they, they work on different uh, scenarios and uh, they um, propose different algorithms. However, they all rely on a very uh, fundamental, uh, fundamental uh, technique called randomized response. So what is a randomized response? It is invented more than five decades ago. It is used for uh, doing the survey. So here is an example. The survey people may ask uh, a very sensitive uh, question, like, uh, do you have some disease? And uh, in this case, each person may flip a secret coin, and this coin is a uh, fire. So the, the person then answer truth if uh, the coin comes up head and answer randomly if it comes up tail. So by calculating the probabilities, we can easily see that if a person has uh, the disease, he will answer yes with the 75% probability and answer no with the 25% probability. And if a person is uh, healthy, he will answer yes and no with the reverse of probabilities. So on the other hand, the server or the survey person, after collecting users' reports, he wants to estimate uh, the frequency uh, uh, or the distribution of the population. So in this case, if we assume the n-sub-yes uh, sub number of users have the uh, disease, we expect to see, uh, sorry, we expect to see 75% of them and 25% uh, of the rest of the user will answer yes. And by, by reversing this equation, we, get, uh, we come to a very simple and easy to uh, uh, calculate uh, formula that gives us uh, the estimation of the sick people. And moreover, this is an unbiased estimation. And also, uh, we, we can do the similar thing for the uh, no answers. What uh, local differential privacy introduces is it gives this randomized response a very uh, formal privacy uh, notion. Uh, what it says is that for any possible input values and for any possible output, the ratio of the probability of observing the same output given different input is bounded by e to epsilon. And in this case, in the binary uh, randomized response, by enumerating all the possibilities, we can see that this algorithm actually uh, satisfies law in three local differential privacy. The next slide shows the uh, system model of this uh, uh, local differential privacy. In this case, there is a centralized server and there are multiple users. The users uh, have the private value and uh, use a local differential privacy algorithm to report it to the server. Thus, the users do not need to trust any party. And uh, the server's task is to take uh, the reports from all the users and uh, uh, estimate the distribution of a different value in the domain. Come on. Sorry. Okay, so, uh, so we, uh, we observe that this estimation function is done independently and uh, separately for each user, uh, so, sorry, for each value. As a result, the estimation may not be consistency. In particular, some of the estimation might be negative. 
and moreover, the sum of the estimation may not uh, equal to our uh, expected uh, sum. In this paper, we explore 10 different methods. We summarize their, uh, we summarize, uh, their, uh, uh, their work. We um, uh, systematically analyze and uh, evaluate uh, their, uh, <coughs> uh, their uh, effect on, on post-processing the LDP estimation. So this table gives the summary of the 10 different methods. The, the 10, uh, this method can be generally partitioned into four groups. The first one is a uh, um, baseline uh, method that only does cutting. They, they, they cut uh, some of the negative, negative uh, uh, estimations to zero, which is, uh, of course, helpful because the negative estimation is impossible in this setting. And the second group is a uh, normalization-based method. It, uh, in, uh, in addition to uh, converting negative estimation to zero, also do the normalization of all the estimations. In this talk in particular, I'm going to show two of the, uh, the post-processing methods, namely uh, base post, which convert negative estimation to zero, and uh, norm sub, which in addition to base post, uh, ad additively normalize the result. So this, this slide shows a toy example of how these two uh, methods works. Um, the top left figure is uh, the ground truth or the true distribution, and the top right one is the estimation did, uh, did by the uh, LDP. Because LDP introduced the noise, some of the estimation may be negative uh, which is, of course, uh, impossible. So what uh, base post does is uh, basically uh, convert those negative uh, uh, estimations to zero. However, this also introduces another inconsistency. That is, the sum of the estimation now become uh, inconsistent with what we expect to say. Uh, and in this case, it, uh, the sum is 106. Uh, so to to overcome this issue, we uh, what a norm sub does is to additively normalize the result, and in this case, it will subtract one to each of the positive estimation. So the first uh, contribution of this paper is that we show that this norm sub method is actually the solution to uh, a, a more standard uh, statistical method called the uh, constraint least square or um, approximately the solution to uh, maximal likelihood estimation. So to see why this is the case, we first uh, want to analyze the estimation function in LDP. So the estimation function in more general is also very simple. It's uh, uh, this uh, hat of uh, N sub V. It, it has two parameters, but those parameters are, uh, will be clear given the uh, LDP function. So in particular, in this case, the p-value is the probability that uh, after perturbation, uh, any value supports itself, and the q is the probability that after perturbation, any other value supports this uh, uh, current value. So, so we find that actually this, uh, <coughs> this n sub, uh, hat of n sub v only have one, no, uh, one random variable, which is I sub V. And the I sub V is uh, the composed of uh, two binomials. And uh, in, in, in the case where uh, LDP is considered, this n, uh, small n is uh, typically very large, typically like uh, um, million to billion in the case of uh, Google and Apple usage. So in this case, the uh, binomial estimation can be well approximated by the normal or Gaussian distribution. So while this is not very surprising, this makes, us, uh, this makes the uh, uh, analysis uh, quite easy. And in this case, we can show that norm sub is the solution to uh, MLE. So the takeaway message is that uh, uh, the noise of LDP uh, approximately follow the Gaussian uh, distribution, and it's uh, uh, also discovered by other paper. So uh, we have already established the theoretical uh, 
uh, understanding. Now we want to understand how these two post-processing methods work in, uh, in practice. In this slide, I'm uh, showing you the result of uh, I'm showing you the result of uh, uh, a synthesized data set consisting of one million users, and the users' values are uh, following the zip distribution. And I run the LDP estimation 5,000 times. And in this uh, bottom left figure, the blue line shows the uh, frequency of different value, uh, and the values are, of course, so sorted by the frequency, and uh, the red, uh, and the green dots show, shows the uh, mean of uh, the estimation under 5,000 runs. So what uh, the two post-processing method does are to, <coughs> are to essentially we can be seen from the uh, two right uh, figures. They will introduce uh, uh, positive bias. In particular, what post base post does is uh, uh, introduces uh, systematic uh, positive bias to the infrequent values. And uh, what uh, norm sub does is it will, in, uh, in addition to uh, the positive bias, also introduce negative bias to the um, very frequent values. So we, are, uh, we, we all know that bias is a bad thing in estimation. Uh, however, the post-processing method prevent some inf uh, impossible things, impossible events from happening. So what, does the, what, what do the two factors come into play when uh, doing the estimation? Uh, that's a question we want to answer. So in the next slide, I'm showing you the uh, variance of uh, post-processing method and the original method. As we can see, the original method have, uh, in the original method, the, po uh, the variance of the 5,000 runs is, uh, is high. Uh, even after 5,000 5, rounds. This is because the noise in LDP is quite large. However, after post-processing, we can see the uh, variance is smaller, uh, especially for the infrequent values. So the takeaway message here is that utility will be composed of a bias and a variance, which is also known, uh, uh, widely known. And uh, <coughs> The message here, the real message here is that the post-processing method will inevitably introduce bias, but at the same time, they will also reduce the variance. And different methods are essentially different ways of uh, achieving uh, trade-off between bias and variance. So in the uh, final Two slides. I'm going to show. I'm going to show you the uh, comparison of different methods uh, in, <coughs> in in this setting. So in this figure, the uh, the y-axis is the mean squared error, which uh, uh, also indicates the accuracy or utility. The smaller, the better. And the x-axis is the epsilon. The the smaller, the better. But uh, uh, the smaller. Uh, the more frequent, uh, the sorry, the smaller the, the better the privacy. But at the same time, the worse the accuracy. Uh, the accuracy. So these, two, uh, we, we first can see that uh, the uh, base post method actually can improve the utility, and the norm sub will further uh, improve the utility. Note that there is another uh, normalization method called normal, which uh, multiplicatively uh, normalizes the result. Uh, while the method is widely used and it sounds reasonable, it does not work in this uh, setting. This is because uh, essentially the noise in our setting is a, a, a follow Gaussian noise, and in this case, uh, multiplicatively normalized the result uh, cannot lead to a um, maximal entropy, uh, sorry, maximal likelihood estimation, and uh, uh, as a result, uh, give bad uh, um, uh, error. So, uh, so in this figure, we can see that norm sub uh, gives the best result, followed by base pulse, and uh, norm mal gives the worst result. And uh, also, uh, we can see that exploiting this different constraint can be helpful, but uh, we should be careful because if we do it in the wrong way 
which is what uh, normal model does, uh, we will have a worse result. And the, the final figure shows the uh, estimation of a set value. Uh, <coughs> so the x-axis is the uh, row. We, uniform, uh, we uniformly sample row percent of elements from the domain and measure the MSE of estimating the uh, subset of values. And we, we also compare these uh, three methods, and it can be seen that the normalization-based method works best, and uh, the MSE is uh, symmetric with respect to the row equals 50 uh, line, uh, if the estimation can sum up to one, uh, which is the true in um, normalization-based method. To summarize, in this paper, we uh, uh, summary and uh, compare and analyze uh, 10 different methods. And uh, the takeaway message is that first, uh, uh, LDP noise is actually uh, Gaussian noise. And uh, norm sub is a solution to uh, uh, maximal likelihood estimation. And exploiting the prior or the constraint uh, or the consistent constraint is helpful, but uh, we need to uh, be careful because if we do it in the wrong way, it will give worse result. And finally, different uh, method works for different tasks, uh, which will be more clear in the paper. But uh, because of the time limit, I'm going. I'm not showing uh, in the, in this talk. So with that, I'm uh, summarizing the the. The, sorry, I, I'm finishing my talk and I'm happy to take questions. Uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, is there any questions? So uh, I do have a question. Uh, what if you know the LDP noise does not follow Gaussian? Yeah, that's a good question. In, uh, in fact, uh, there is a, a other uh, method under LDP. For example, uh, we can apply Laplace mechan mechanism in uh, LDP, and that does not follow Gaussian uh, distribution. Uh, so if that is the case, we, I think we need to redo the analysis. However, we, uh, the, the method we consider in this paper are the state-of-the-art method, and uh, they all follow some sort of uh, Gaussian distribution. So that, um, yeah, so, so the answer is uh, we, we, we need to reconsider it if it's not uh, Gaussian. Okay, any other questions? Let's thank the speaker and move to the last talk of the session. Thank you.